So basically today I'm going to give you uh, some tips and recommendations to investors or anyone who is interested in improving the trading ecosystems or the fintech ecosystem uh, in general. And I will show you the risks that I found in trading applications and how you can protect yourself. So about me. So basically I have been doing research and consulting in IOactive for more than seven years now. Uh, I studied economics and finance, finance 101 in college, you know, the basic uh, courses. Later on, I read some books and learned some of uh, the basics on trading on the internet. Finally, I took some other courses in the Mexican Stock Exchange and other um, courses in Mexico. In the past few years, I have entered into the US equities um, market, so I find it very interesting. Um, finally, I had the chance to present my work, uh, this work that I will show you today in Black Hat USA last year. And today we are going to discuss this. I'm going to show you the trading software that I included in my research, the vulnerabilities and risks that I found. And finally, some tips that you can use after the presentation. This is how the trading floors looked like many years ago. Uh, it was known as the open outcry, all the people yelling, you know, the, the, the beats and sales, etc. But nowadays, the stock exchanges look like this, more computers, less people. Everything is uh, automated through networks, through protocols, but in the end are computers, right? There are risks involved. Having said that, it's important to know that the valuable information, the attack surface and the attack vectors in trading environments are different than those in banking systems. Because in banking systems, we have a centralized uh, financial entity, right? Uh, which is different from trading uh, the trading ecosystem, this ecosystem because there are many other players uh, in the game, right? There are different institutions, there are intermediaries, there are regulators, etc. So it's different. Now, the brokerage houses offer you trading platforms, right? It could be a mobile app, it could be a desktop application or web applications, right? Web platforms. Now, let's see the most, uh, some of the most famous ones. Based on my sources, for instance, we have TD Ameritrade with 11 million funded accounts, followed by Schwab, Charles Schwab with 10 million active accounts, MetaTrader, which is a very popular uh, platform where you can connect your uh, accounts. Uh, it has many millions. I don't have an extra figure, but it's, it's, a, it's a huge player. Also, Yahoo Finance, 75 million uh, of monthly active users. Previously, Yahoo Finance used to be only for market data, but nowadays you can link your trading accounts so you can keep uh, track of the performance on your account. Also, we have Robinhood, Robinhood Plus, Coinbase for crypto uh, coins, uh, which is the biggest one and a few more. For instance, we have Bloomberg Terminal, which is very expensive. I didn't have access to these terminals, uh, but supposedly uh, they are one of the most secure ones, but not sure yet. Um, and there are many other platforms. There are hundreds of platforms. If you go to the internet and put uh, trading flat platforms, you will see hundreds of them, hundreds of brokers. Uh, for instance, this one, Oanda, is famous for Forex Exchange and so on. Even uh, the realistic TV show Billions that probably many of you uh, know, this is Axe Capital and they are using the classic Bloomberg terminals, right? You can see the Bloomberg keyboards and also it seems that Bobby Axelrod uses TV Ameritrade. Now, what is the trading software, software that I included in my research? I chose 16 desktop applications, 34 mobile apps, and 30 websites from 40 brokers, approximately. Probably some of these names are familiar to you, such as Avatrade, um, 
Bitfinex, Bitso, which is the biggest uh, crypto market in Mexico, Capital One, Charles Schwab, Coinbase, eSignal, eToro, which is famous in the uh, in Spain, uh, as far as I remember, eTrade, Expert Options, Fidelity, First Trade, some Mexican brokers, Interactive Brokers, which is a big player as well, IQ Option, Markets.com, Merrill Ledge, MetaTrader, Money.net, Oanda, Plus 500, which is very popular in Spain as well, Robinhood, Scott Trade, TD Ameritrade, and Yahoo Finance. Unfortunately, the results proved to be way worse compared to banking technologies. For some reason, uh, when I started to dissect these applications, I felt that I was in 2002, 2003, you know, dissecting these uh, uh, crack me applications. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, a co-worker, a friend of mine from IOActive, did the same for banking applications in 2013 and in 2015, and still we are still worse than that nowadays in 2018-2019. Now, what are the vulnerabilities and how they could affect you? I'm going to skip this slide and let's go to the details. Some of the biggest problems I found is in the authentication process. Most web-based applications implement 2FA, which is good, right, for authentication. However, in some cases, when 2FA is enabled, 2FA is not asked when withdrawing money. So there, are, there could be different uh, attack scenarios for this. This is good to have 2FA at uh, authentication, but whenever you sell uh, securities, whenever you sell your positions and you liquidate those positions into fiat money, and you move that money into your linked bank account, 2FA is not asked. Normally, only the password is asked. So imagine that an attacker has, by any chance, access to your session. I don't know, there could be many, many ways. And the attacker knows your password. Whenever the money goes from your brokerage account to the bank account, that the attacker could also link a new account, right? Uh, the money would disappear, disappear without asking for another uh, factor authentication, right? Another problem is that desktop flat platforms do not implement 2FA, even if they correspond from the same broker. Let's say the broker A implements 2FA on the web application and the desktop application that they offer, you know, the XA installer using the same HTTP server, the same APIs, for some reason, they do not implement 2FA, which is not good, right? And on many mobile apps, Nowadays, most of the phones uh, have a fingerprint reader, right? However, not all the apps implement uh, the authentication this way, which is uh, something that could be improved. Another problem, on encrypted communications, I saw that in, in many cases, uh, they sent partially uh, on encrypted communications, and in some cases, in a few cases, all the communication was completely unencrypted. Most applications encrypt all the traffic over HTTPS. And the unencrypted data I saw was on HTTP, the plain text one. The FIX, which is Financial Information Exchange Protocol, and a few other proprietary protocols that were binary protocols, but still it's not encrypted. All you need is to decode the protocol properly, and that's it. Imagine a scenario. You are a trader or an investor or, you know, someone who has some money in a savings accounts uh, for long term, invested in some securities, whatever, and you're in a coffee place using the public Wi-Fi, and your application is not encrypting data. So an attacker could perform a man in the middle attack and alter the data between the real servers and your phone or your laptop, right? So there could be many different attack scenarios. For instance, the attacker could gain access to your account if the username and password travels in clear text, 
or the attacker could be playing with the with the prices of of certain securities such as stocks so the real price let's say if is 20 bucks and the attacker moves it to 18 bucks and you might think this is a cheap price or something happened and you buy stocks right so you would be buying or selling on misleading information and there are many other attack scenarios that you can imagine right so encryption is one of the most important things let's see some examples you have here ABA trade. you have here the, the instruments and everything is on plain text so you see the amounts your account number your pair of current of currencies usd uh, japan yen in this case this is another example this is a signal manager right so they provide you real-time signals on the market it's a paid service so you put your username and password but guess what this is a proprietary protocol from apparently 99 but still used used today you can see here the clear text password you know in the finance industry there are many legacy software and they are being carrying it for decades and they're still there and we use them mostly for between institutions you know for uh, institutional traders uh what about fix fix uh was initiated in 92 and it's a standard protocol for trading and messaging it's been used uh, all over the world by different exchanges and traders there are guidelines on the internet on the main uh, website on how to implement it securely through a secure channel you know through https or ssl tunnels but what i have seen now only a few brokers implement a secure way of fix you can see an example uh, of a message here in the red square these are the uh, the 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 limit and characters the pipes but the rest is ascii and a few binary bytes for instance fx pro you have two endpoints you have an endpoint for quoting prices and you have an endpoint for trading right where you can sell and buy if you can prefer you can use ssl but if you don't prefer you can use plain text i mean if you're using um, ssl why do you still offer plain text i understand that for for in, for integration right there are other tools that don't implement ssl yet so they have to use plain text which is not good right because your password and all the information goes unencrypted like this one you can see here my positions my stocks my portfolio basically and here you can see my you know my symbols like for solar intuitive surgical uh, planet fitness etc and you can see this is you can see here this is the fixed protocol there are some binary data but the rest is plain text data another example here whatever you type on your mobile app is sent in plain text you can see instructions quotes of certain uh, symbols this is another one this is an interesting one uh, at the login page you will see the ESSL button I mean what is the purpose of, of this and is disabled by default why do you show this to your to your customers I think this is a uh, I don't know like like they are offering you extra protection if you we understand SSL right we are um, tech savvy uh, people but there is there are people financiers you know seasoned traders that have no idea what is the meaning of SSL and they won't enable it so all this information goes unencrypted to fix you can see here the figures right your cash values in US dollars 
there are other features that are implemented uh, in an insecure way. For instance, all this information goes encrypted, but not this one, the diagnostic logs. The application uploads every day or every week, I don't remember, logs in a zip file in, in an unencrypted channel. And this file has a lot of information, personal information, uh, your portfolio, etc. And there are many applications that implement, you know, insecure channels. Let's see a new feature implemented by one of the brokers. This is interactive brokers. So most of the application at this point Price of Netflix. uses uh, HTTPS, but the iBot, which is a robot assistant, you can send orders. In this place, in this, in this, at this moment, I'm saying price of Netflix. So I sent the order to my assistant, and the assistant returned me the price. Buy 100 shares of Netflix at market price. Buy 100 shares of Netflix at market price. And in the end, I submit the order. Submit order. So I click on transmit, the order went through, but in the end, analyzing this with Wireshark, which has a basic fix parser, you can see there the raw data, the user input, which is a basic JSON um, artifact. You will see there what the user entered, such as buy 100 share, shares of, of Netflix at market price, etc. This is a quick example of the risks of not having this encrypted. Now, not only the communication um, on the fly has to be encrypted, everything is stored locally must be encrypted as well. The passwords, which is uh, which are the most important ones to access your account, in many cases, they are stored when encrypted in config files and XML files and also in log files. The log files could be retrieved easily depending on your uh, the operating system. In Android, for instance, is ADB logcat. What is the risk of information leaked in log files? I have seen uh, many different types of, of, of information in logs. But now we are talking specifically of passwords. Imagine an attacker steals your phone and he has a way to enter the config files of your mobile app. He has your username, your password. The attacker could log in, sell the stocks, transfer money to a newly added bank account, delete this bank account, account and log out. This is in the case you don't have 2FA enabled right let's see some some examples here we have the password in plain text qwerty full bar this is plus 500 clear text password this is avatrade clear text password remember bay64 is not encryption this one which is a paid application has the password in base64. This is in a log file. Another one. You see the password super secret. And another one, interactive brokers. Plus the passwords, there are many other data, as I said before, stored unencrypted. Now, trading data refers to you know your positions how much money you have invested when did you buy uh, xyz stocks how many positions etc uh, and the risk is that a malicious user could gain insight into your portfolio into your investments for instance how much money do you have invested what's your net worth and what would be or what could be your uh, strategy 
For instance, uh, balances, your portfolio, even personal data, your watch lists, your quoted symbols. See, you have here my portfolio. And you can hear, you can see here in the log files, all the instruments. This is personal information as well. Your account ID, your cash balances, your portfolio, your name, your address, your email, your phone, your orders. This one, when you bought <clears throat> at market price, and even you have this the same screen in a fancy ASCII art in the log files, which is pretty useful for you know for an attacker who wants to gain insight in, in, into your investments. Quantities. Etc., etc., etc. Now, if we move to another section, do you have any question? Let's see if we have any, any open question. Okay, we'll no right question. Yep. Okay, no questions yet. Cool. All right, let's continue with this one. Trading languages. Uh, in most complex uh, applications, the most sophisticated ones, they allow you to implement your own trading robots, your own indicators. But this is not a bug, this is a feature they offer you to create your own trading applications, more you know, sophisticated stuff. You can create your expert advi advisors, your own indicators, advanced charts, etc. And the risk is that most of these languages are based in other uh, programming languages, such as C++, C Sharp, Pascal. And the way they implement this is through DLL imports. Many applications restrict DLL imports or warn you about them. For instance, MetaTrader, which is the most famous uh, platform, they implement in their MetaQuotes language the DLL imports. In Ninja Trader, they call it Ninja Script, but at the, the end, everything is the same. Our DLL imports, right? For instance, this one, Avatrade Act, their language is ActFX. It's based on Pascal, but it doesn't support uh, OS commands or DLL imports. Now, let's see what are the risks of having these languages. In this case, this is MetaTrader. I'm going to open my programming language. And in here, I downloaded an indicator, which is an Ichimoku Cloud, which is a famous uh, Japanese indicator. Pay attention to this. This is the cloud library, which is an import of shell32.dll and I'm importing this function. This is the function to draw the Ichimoku cloud into my graph. So I have a, you know, a base 64 something. It's easy to spot this is a malicious plugin right for us but not for the for the financiers that have no idea of base 64 stuff you know so i'm going to open a new chart and i'm going to drag my plugin here my cloud my ichimoku cloud interestingly the application warns you it's like, hey, this could be dangerous. Enable only for trusted applications. However, in most tutorials you follow on the internet, you see on the internet, they don't explain you this. They just go like, hey, just import this and you'll do money with this plugin, right? So all the people want to get get rich overnight, so they import it. Whatever DLL means, I, I will allow it, right? 
So if the people is not tech savvy, the investor will see here the cloud. This, this is the Ichimoku cloud, but in the back, in the back end, in the back office, you will see a backdoor. This is a netcat, a listener port. So I have control of the remote computer of the traders uh, machine. And you will see here the, you know, the MetaTrader, the Ichimoku cloud being listened. Uh, and that's game over for the trader. Another interesting feature is the privacy mode. Not all the applications implement this mode. And this basically protects private information from being displayed in public areas uh, and is against so shoulder surfing attacks. You will see, for instance, here, this is before and after enable the privacy mode. All the important figures are hidden. This is Tinkerswim from TD Ameritrade. This is the desktop application as well. They implement this. These are the figures uh, covered. Yahoo Finance as well. Your games of the day, your net worth, etc. This is a good uh, feature as well. Denial of service. Many applications need to integrate with other software, right? Such as signal providers. And these signal providers, uh, in many cases run as TCP servers. However, we are still committing errors from the 90s. We are not limiting the number of connections or resources you provide to each connection, right? So long story short, you can run out of memory with many requests, right? You can kill the, the, the TCP service. For instance, we saw on TD Ameritrade's Think or Swim, the TCP orders server uh, a denial of service. You basically could kill the applications with uh, 300 connections at a time. It's fixed now. But let's see another example. Here is your application running properly. This is a malicious JavaScript function that whenever it opens, it's gonna be sending local get requests to local host, which is where the uh, the eSignal software is listening. Now imagine you are a trader and you receive a link, you know, a phishing uh, email with a malicious link that points to this HTML file, malicious. So let's see. Whenever the trader opens, opens these uh, applications, it's like, hey, do you really know what's going on behind? While you're reading this, you will see the number of sockets connected locally to your data manager. And after a while, the application was killed. And since this was a TCP server offering real-time market data to other applications, the other applications won't be able to retrieve this data, right? Because there will be uh, the application uh, will be dead already. This is AMI broker, so the plugin is disconnected. So the trader won't be able to trade or to receive information from the application anymore. It's another risk. And also many brokerage houses or many financial institutions, they do not uh, give, give you guidance on, on you know, the risks on trading online. Only a few companies offer you guidance. For instance, First Trade, they have a online security. They give you guidance on how you can protect yourself, etc. You use, you know, how to avoid identity theft, what security tools tools you should use, etc. Another important interesting portion is social media, social networks. I was surprised when I first uh, saw, you know, the the uh, the stock exchanges, the big the big ones, Nasdaq, NYSE, uh, when they were sharing instagram stories and they 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 share stories 
every day, every single morning before the market opens. They share stories and posts on new IPOs. They give you guidance. They teach you a lot of stuff on their Instagram accounts or on Twitter and the rest of, of, of social networks. And it's cool to see how the stock market is interactive with the public investors, right? Through social media. But still there are risks in social media, right? It's good to have connect to have connect, connection there with other traders or to receive information there. But this could be a source of misleading information as well, of fake news, or even confusion. There was a, a, a funny confusion story I saw last year, as far as I remember. Do you remember the PGP security bug on the encryption software? So many people started to tweet about uh, the security bug of the email encryption software, blah, blah, blah. However, it is well known that in the trading community, you use the dollar sign to refer to a stock ticker, but someone put the stock ticker of, uh, you know, PGP, which is another, a whole different thing. It's another company, PGP. So you can see here the symbol plunged. And five minutes later, the people realized that PGP was not this PGP and they bought back again and the price rebound. It's a funny story, right? But like this, there are many, many of these. Now, the core of this presentation, which are the tips for secure trading? We strongly recommend you to enable 2FA. In any kind of application you use, enable it. Enable fingerprint out in your mobile app. Whatever you see, HTTPS or SSL, enable it. And also avoid uh, public Wi-Fi networks. Uh, regarding passwords, use a strong password, a long password, uh, and do not use the same password for all the other financial entities, for your banking, for instance. Also, if you need it, it's recommended to automatic uh, log out your application. In my case, I have uh, configured my trading application to automatically kicks me out every uh, after five hours of inactivity. So I think it's a it's a good uh, countermeasure. Uh, whenever you are in public areas, enable the privacy mode. Also, enable notifications. So you will see who logged in in your applications or if if there is a withdraw, withdraw order or something else, right? Also keep your software updated. Either it's a mobile app or it's a desktop app, keep it updated. Install antivirus software for extra pro protection too. What you should disable are diagnostic logs. Uh, I have seen a lot of personal information and, you know, your portfolios in there and you don't want the developers or your broker brokerage house to know how much money you have invested to fix a null pointer the reference for instance right um if you see anything to improve the software it sounds a bit uh bad you know not to help to improve the software but so far in my case i would disable it not to send the crashes automatically to, to your broker. And finally, if you don't need any integration with other software, disable the server options, in your desktop application. So you don't have a TCP port there listening and could be another surface for attack. Regarding plugins from the internet, trading robots, do not install this software, these indicators, these charts from untrusted sources. There are many forums on, on people uh, developing uh, robots, which is good, right? But if you can take a look, and, you know, you can be careful about DLL imports. If you see something about, hey, this plugin needs DLL access to your, uh, or command, external commands access, uh, think twice before enabling it and also it's not recommended to trade from untrusted sources or trusted environments such as rooted phones or jailbroken devices right 
regarding social media. Before sending an order, a buy or sell order, ensure you are not trading on fake news, right? Check twice on reliable information on, 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 on trusted sources before you trade. Uh, another good thing is do not leave your computer unattended when trading. And finally, go to your brokerage website and look for security and privacy content. They might have some particular tips that apply to their platforms that you can apply in your real life. And finally, if you uh, can help us to create a better trading and better fintech ecosystem, spread the word. You can use the hashtag on your social media and you, know, you can share uh, these tips that I gave you today to your uh, colleagues and people. In conclusion, cybersecurity has been adopted very slowly in, in this part of the, of the fintech, right? What we have seen is a clear correlation between, between the biggest brokers and the quality of their products, the security of their products. The ones who invest more in cybersecurity are the ones who protect more their customer base. 